Welcome or welcome back to Lights On Podcast. If you like what you hear, please tap into your generosity, rate us five star, and share. I'm your host, Mitra Manesh. I'm a mindfulness storyteller and educator. I teach at UCLA's Semmel Institute for Neuroscience and Human Behavior Mindful Awareness Research Center. I'm also the founder of Inner Map, an innovative new mindfulness app. And I've been the coach to many knowns and unknowns of the world for the past 35 years, helping them to love, live, and lead more mindfully, joyfully, and peacefully. If you'd like to explore my work further, go to App Store and download and try Inner Map app for free, or simply visit mitramanesh.com. This episode is about how we're writing our individual story of COVID-19. I've been working more full-time than before. I didn't think it was possible, but apparently it is. I teach free workshops. I teach weekly classes. I coach national and international clients. And I accept as many invitations for live discussions on different social media as I can accommodate. What I'm trying to say is I'm in my isolation, quite connected with the world. And I'm watching the global pattern of how people are writing their stories around the COVID-19 time. In my dyslexic mind, and I do have extreme dyslexia, so many things may make sense to many of you, do not make sense to me. So I am always looking for patterns and shapes and stories to make sense of things. In that part of my mind, I am seeing patterns forming. I am seeing that in a very general way, people are writing their stories in uh, two different ways. They're either growing and evolving through what's going on outside of them, and it could be at any dimension. It could be at physical dimension. They would be eating and moving more and better. Or it could be a mental and emotional dimension that they are feeling and observing their emotions and thoughts in a more balanced way. They're not too attached to it and they're not too detached from it. And also at the spiritual dimension, at the energetic dimension, they are far more connected to their authentic self and they're looking at what's going on in a deeper sense. Or I see people going backwards. They're letting their physical health to go down. They have unhealthy relationship with their thoughts and emotions. And also they are disconnected from the deeper, wiser part of themselves. And these are all normal. We go there. We all go there. It's a very unusual experience that we are collectively experiencing. So I have no judgment or complaint about it but I'm merely observing the facts of it, that what happened and took us down took most of us down at the same level, more or less, at least emotionally. And then when we go down, we have a choice to get up. And then when we get up, we have a choice of which direction do we want to go. And this story of individual story of COVID-19 is just waiting to be written and waiting to be written in a conscious way. Because on autopilot, we can guess it. There's no art to it. It's very common. We all know. We can all complain. We can tell each other how bad we have it and how bad the world has it. And of course, the news always supplies enough evidence for us to say that. And I'm not referring to the outside world. I'm really talking about the fact that at any given time, we experience life at two complete different dimensions. The dimension of our inner world and the dimension of outer world. The outer world is not in our control. It's happening and it's happening the way it's happening. But how we digest and how we write and how we interact with that outer aspect of us is what is absolutely in our control. So 
if you're feeling out of control, the out of controlness is about the outer aspect of life. Those are the things that we cannot do anything about. But in my inner world, I actually have a say, and I have a lot of say. So we're determining by the way, by the decisions we're making or not making, how we're going to be talking about this time of history. We're going to make movies about it. We're going to be writing books about it. We're going to refer to it as an important part of life. However, the question is, how consciously are we going to live through this time? Because that's the determining factor. That's what makes it for us or breaks it for us. This is the point of reference. But what kind of reference? Well, it depends on what you want it to be. Again, I'm not talking about the outer aspect of the events. I'm talking about what you do have a say on. Are we going to move intentionally from complaining to cultivating? Are we going to go from survival mode to growth and thriving mode? Are we going to go from helplessness to wise action? It's all in our hands. We are so connected that as we are writing our individual stories, we are also writing the collective story of this era. So what will happen after this and how the history of mankind, humankind, will change and evolve depends on these little tiny stories that you and I are writing. We do have an influence in how the collective story will end up. So if you're seeking some kind of command in your life, this is a perfect way of commanding the direction of this era. Write your story consciously, clearly, and with a sense of knowingly. Decide what you want to do. Even if you want to go to the fear land and complain, do it knowingly. I just remembered that One of my teachers always told me, do what you do with awareness. And it was at the time that I was asking him about a question that I had, should I or shouldn't I do it? And he refused to tell me whether I should or shouldn't do it. And he said, it doesn't matter. I want you to do it consciously and see if you can do it. And then his example was that many things that we do unconsciously If we were conscious, we wouldn't be able to do it. How many times a day I hurt people by the words I use? If I decided and said, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to ruin this person's day, it would be very hard to do that. But unconsciously, I can ruin 20 people's days and no problem. No problem. I wouldn't even move. I wouldn't even scratch my head doing that. But when I do it consciously, it's hard. All this harm that we're doing, and my God, we do a lot of harm unknowingly. If we bring consciousness to it, it will be very hard to do it. In the native tradition, they see Amazon as the lung of the universe. And it is fascinating to me to see that after what happened in the Amazon, Then we get COVID-19 that affects the lungs of people. This is how connected we are. This is how consciousness works in our lives. And I want to go back to the question of how you're writing your story. How? The life, universe, source, whatever you want to name that larger aspect of yourself is waiting for your individual decision, which, by the way, will form the collective decision. We are standing at the fork. There is no straight. It's either left or right. Left take us further into our separate fear land, and right will take us to our united, elevated land. The choice is ours. Every day I find myself asking Do I want to go this way or do I want to go that way? Because once I choose the path, when I know if I'm turning left or right, then smaller decisions are easier to make because now I know where I'm going. 
I've set my destination. And no matter how small of a step I take, no matter how many small words I use to write my story, at least I'm going to the right direction. So we're writing our stories anyway. If you're not writing it consciously, you're writing it on autopilot, and fear will take over your story. And I'm going to close this podcast with one question. Which direction are you going to? Are you turning left and going deeper into the anarchy of fearland? Or you turning right to the commonwealth of love? Hope this episode answered the question or two for you or provoked and inspired questions in you. I'm so grateful you showed up and listened up. Until the next time, be well and stay curious.